All right, welcome to our complete review of ophthalmology. In this video, we're going to cover all eye conditions tested on exams, such as U.S. Emily and Comlex. We're going to have 32 slides, which you can find for free at my website, review questions at the end, which are super boring, in my opinion, and we'll have lots of fun along the way. So let's begin. We begin with a very boring topic, visual field defects. There are lots of them, but the three that we want to keep in mind are optic nerve damage, where the patient can't see out of one eye, i.e. the eye that has the optic nerve damage, optic chiasm damage, where the patient has something called bitemporal hemianopsia, and this can be caused by something like a pituitary adenoma squashing the optic chiasm, and optic tract damage, causing a hamanamama, hamanamanamana, hamanamanamana, okay, let's try that again, homonymous hemianopsia, or hemianopia. This leads to the inability to see out of one half of the visual field on the same side in both eyes. And this can be seen, for example, in stroke. For example, an MCA stroke can lead to this condition. Next, presbyopia, farsightedness, i.e. can't read fine print in magazines anymore. That comes with age, and that makes sense. Pres means old in Greek, like in Presbyterian. So this is a condition that comes with age, and it's due to decreased elasticity in the lens. We treat this condition with glasses. All right, retinal artery and retinal vein occlusion. Retinal artery occlusion presents as a sudden, painless, unilateral blindness with a pale, opaque fundus and a cherry, a delicious cherry red spot on the fovea. When it's transient, it's known as amaurosis fuga, and it looks like a jawbreaker. This is my description, my pathologic description, for as you know, pathologic descriptions are always completely accurate, like eggs on a string and ground glass. They're always exactly what we're trying to describe. And we treat this condition with ocular massage, high flow oxygen, possible thrombolysis, and we try to decrease intraocular pressure. As opposed to in retinal vein occlusion, it presents similarly sudden painless unilateral loss of vision. But here, there may not be outright blindness, there may be simply blurriness. And fundoscopy shows Mars. It looks like Mars. These hemorrhages look like Mars, and you may see it described as cotton wool spots or tortuous veins. We treat this condition with observation, if it's mild, and VEGF inhibitors if it's severe. Next, acute angle closure glaucoma. Just think of extreme pain, extreme emergency, fixed and dilated pupil with tears, headache, nausea, and vomiting, and precipitated by walking into a dark room or anticholinergics. We diagnose this condition with tonometry, and we treat it with IV acetazolamide and mannitol to draw fluid out, as well as topical pilocarpine beta blockers such as timolol and apiclonidine. Definitive treatment is with laser iridotomy. Next, open angle glaucoma. Not as mean as the closed version, but this is the more common one, and it's often asymptomatic and diagnosed via routine screening. Peripheral vision is affected first, as we can see in the picture over here, and patients may complain of headaches, blurry vision, and halos around lights, especially at night. Blacks are especially prone to this condition. Fundoscopy reveals an enlarged optic cup with a cup disc ratio of more than 0.6. We treat this condition with prostaglandin analog eye drops, even if the patient is asymptomatic, in order to decrease the uveal scleral outflow and prevent chronic damage to the eye. And you could take a look at these other medications that are also used in open angle glaucoma. Six, macular degeneration. I've highlighted C over here for central, central vision, because in macular degeneration, there's painless loss of central vision. This condition is due to aging and it causes damage to the macula to usually bilateral, and it's more common in whites and in smokers. Smokers have four times the risk. Patients present, as I said, with loss of central vision, and they have an inability to discern lines, straight lines and edges. For example, they may describe that faces look blurry because they can't discern the edges of faces. Now there are two types, the atrophic dry type, which is a more common cause, but this has no treatment, and the vascular wet type, which involves rapid painless vision loss, but this actually does have treatments. VEGF inhibitors, ranibizumab and vacizumab. Seven, retinal detachment. The retina pulls away from tissues supporting it, and the patient sees floaters. I see black floaty things in my left eye, the patient says, as we can see in the bottom picture over here. And fendoscopy shows vitreous hemorrhages and elevation of the retina. Risk factors include age, older than 50, and an important one for exams is severe myopia, and this happens due to stretching forces on the sclera choroid and retina. Treatment for retinal detachment is surgery. That's usually required, and this is to get the retina back in place. 
vitreous hemorrhage characterized by blood spilling into the vitreous humor. The patient has hazy vision and there may be a red hue or vision loss and the red reflex is decreased or absent. And we treat this with bed rest and elevation of the bed head. Photocoagulation or vitrectomy is required in some cases. Cataracts, lens opacification, resulting in obstructive passage of light and it's the world's leading cause of blindness. It's associated with many etiologies including advanced age, diabetes, smoking, and many others. Patients present with painless, progressive, loss of visual acuity, and night vision loss, usually in both eyes. They describe an inability to drive properly at night because they have night vision loss. We see the bottom picture over here where the patient is driving a Cadillac. I just made that up. I don't know if it's a Cadillac, but Cadillac reminds me of cataracts. Cadillac, cataracts. He's having a difficult time driving at night because he has cataracts. There is no medical therapy for cataracts, but the treatment is surgical lens replacement. By the way, I wrote a little note over here that patients may have a second sight phenomenon where they no longer need their reading glasses anymore because they could see up close, but they lose their far sight. Again, especially at night. 10. Infectious keratitis. Infection of the cornea can be caused by bacteria, especially pseudomonas, viruses such as HSV, fungi, and parasites, and it causes a painful red eye. And caused by pseudomonas, it's an emergency! We gotta get topical antibiotics fast to prevent permanent blindness. We also give empiric fluoroquinolones, such as moxifloxacin, so we can cover all bacterial bases, but we tell the patient not to use contact lens until the ulceration heals. In HSV keratitis, look for branched linear lesions. That's how it will be described on exam. Or they'll give you a picture that looks like this, where we see these dendritic lesions. And we treat HSV keratitis with oral or topical antivirals, such as acyclovir. 11. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus. This is basically shingles with eye involvement in the trigeminal nerve distribution, especially V1, and there's severe pain. Treatment for this is oral acyclovir, but IV may be required if it's severe or the patient is immunocompromised. Next condition, sympathetic ophthalmia. I've highlighted T over here to remind us of the T cell inflammatory response. What happens is one eye gets injured or gets surgery, and then there's a T cell inflammatory response against previously sequestered eye antigens in the eye that got injured, and the response is to both eyes. And here's a fun fact. This disease, sympathetic ophthalmia, was named by a doctor in the late 1800s, and that's probably why sympathetic is a complete misnomer. This disease doesn't really have anything to do with the sympathetic nervous system. But anyway, that was the time when they actually used leeches in the eye to treat this condition. 13. Conjunctivitis. This refers to inflammation of the conjunctiva. There's viral, bacterial, and allergic. In viral, there's a watery discharge, often in the setting of a URI, and we treat this with warm and cold compress, no medication. Bacterial, that has a thicker discharge, and we treat it with erythromycin ointment or another antibiotic topical. With contact wearers, we use fluoroquinolones to cover pseudomonas. 14. Diabetic retinopathy, caused by chronic hyperglycemia that results in changes in permeability, occlusion, ischemia, and subsequent neovascularization. The patient may see blurry, dark areas on fundoscopy, and treatment is with diabetes control, VEGF inhibitors, and if severe, laser therapy or surgery. 15. Corrado conjunctivitis sicca. Dry eyes, especially associated with Sjogren's syndrome, but also vitamin A deficiency, ends with anticholinergic medications. We diagnose at least the one for Sjogren's syndrome with a Schirmer test because it shows reduced tear production. 16. Anterior uveitis. This causes ocular pain, photobia, red eye, and ciliary flush. We see on the right side picture over here, this ciliary flush, where there's like this redness around the colored part of the eye. Exam may show pupillary constriction. It's associated with certain conditions such as sarcoidosis, HSV, toxoplasma, syphilis, Crohn's, ankylosing spondylitis, and reactive arthritis. We evaluate with a slit lamp exam and we treat with eye dilators such as cyclopentylate and topical steroids. 17. Subconjunctival hemorrhage. Bleeding underneath the conjunctiva. It's usually asymptomatic. It's a benign condition and treatment is reassurance because, because it goes away on its own. 18. CMV retinitis caused by CMV cytomegalovirus, a double-stranded DNA virus like all the herpes viruses. It's painless. Painless. CMV stands for see I'm fine. I'm fine because it's painless. See I'm fine because it's painless versus HSV and toxoplasma chorioretinitis. It's associated with advanced HIV AIDS or severe immunosuppression. Patients describe floaters with blurry vision and it leads to blind spots, either peripheral or central. Fundoscopy shows yellow, white, fluffy hemorrhagic lesions. We treat this with oral antivirals, possibly IV injections, and antiretroviral therapy.
19, neonatal conjunctivitis. There's the chemical one, gonococcal one, and chlamydia, just depending when we're talking about it. If it's within one day, it's chemical conjunctivitis. And this is mild conjunctival irritation and tearing after silver nitrate or erythromycin ophthalmic prophylaxis that we give in the hospital. This is what we would see in a baby on day one. In gonococcal, this is between two and seven. This is the severe one that we want to avoid, and that's why we give babies erythromycin cream within an hour of delivery. If we don't give it, the patient can develop severe eyelid swelling, profuse purulence, corneal edema, and ulceration. And chlamydia, that happens from days 5 to 14, where we see mild eyelid swelling and a watery discharge. We treat this one with oral azithromycin or erythromycin. 20. Optic neuritis. An inflammatory demyelination of the optic nerve, seen mostly in women 20 to 40, and strongly associated with MS. And there's acute monocular vision loss, with painful eye movement and washed out color vision, as we can see in the picture on the right over here. Fundoscopy is normal because the inflammation is behind the optic nerve head. We treat this condition with IV steroids. Next, amblyopia lazii, reduced visual acuity caused by a child who had strabismus or uncorrected refractive error and we didn't correct it. Treatment is with corrective lenses, eye patch, and cycloplegic eye drops to blur the normal eye. 22, trachoma caused by chlamydia trachomatis, the most common infectious cause of blindness worldwide. And it's fascinating. The blindness is caused by trachiasis, where there's inversion of the eyelids, and the eyelids now scratch the eye. Corneal abrasion, where there's trauma to the cornea. Patients present with severe eye pain and increased hearing, and they refuse to open the affected eye. Now there's a problem here, because this could lead to open globe injury, in which the fluorescent stain is contraindicated. But the fluorescent stain is what we need to diagnose corneal abrasion. 24. The Graves' Disease Eye Condition. Graves' Ophthalmopathy, also known as Graves' Orbitopathy where there's T-cell infiltration and, and local release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and there's proptosis where the eyes pop out, irritation such as sandy sensation, redness, pain, and tearing. 25. Orbital compartment syndrome. This is basically just compartment syndrome of the eye. 26. Photokeratitis, which is basically a sunburn of the eye. And we treat it with supportive care and NSAIDs because it usually resolves within two days. Ectopia lentis, lens detachment, where there's painless vision loss. It can occur due to trauma, and if it detaches easily, we have to start thinking about Marfan syndrome or homocystinuria, conditions where the lens of the eye is not attached securely, and we treat this condition with surgical correction. 28. Candida endophthalmitis. Think about a hospitalized patient on a central venous catheter, as we see in the picture, and they have painless vision loss. We diagnose it with blood cultures, but this usually doesn't show anything. That's why we need a vitreous fluid sampling and culture, which is more sensitive. We treat this with systemic antifungals, and if it's severe, it may need surgery. 29. Various eyelid conditions. These are tested pretty often, actually. Blepharitis is inflammation of the eyelids, usually bilateral. Patients present with redness, burning, and possible scaling or foreign body sensation. Collazione, that's like the Bartholin cyst by the vagina, just by the eyelid. There's a rubber painless nodule due to occlusion of the meibomian gland. You don't need to call the doctor with Collazione. Calling me lazy? No. Don't call me lazy. I'm not calling the doctor because I don't need to. Because I could treat this myself with a warm compress. Dacrocytitis, this is tear duct inflammation. I like to think dacropustitis because there's pus in this condition. Dacryostenosis is a related condition where there's narrowing of the nasolacrimal duct and there's excessive tearing. A child may complain of excessive tearing and that can lead to dacrocytitis. Entropion is when the eyelid turns inward, seen in the elderly. And hordeolum is when there's painful red nodule at the lid around the interior of the eyelid. So unlike collazione, the hordeolum is infectious and painful, and it's caused by Staph aureus. 30. Eye disease in various conditions. So we have neurofibromatosis type 1, where we see two eye conditions. Optic pathway glioma, where there's unilateral vision loss and proptosis, and Lish nodules, melanocytic hamartomas. Retinoblastoma is the most common intraocular malignancy in babies, where there's progressive unilateral vision loss. And an association is leukocoria, where we see a white pupillary reflex. There's no red re It's not a red re it's not, a red, it's not a red reflex, it's a white one. That could be indicative of retinoblastoma. And Wilson disease, where there are copper deposits in the cornea, leading to the Kaiser Fleischer rings, as you can see in the picture. There may also be limitation in eye movement. 31. Retinitis pigmentosa. Kind of rare. But remember, limited peripheral vision. Patients become, in fact, legally blind because the peripheral vision is so bad. And for this condition, I made a mnemonic. The P's. Peripheral vision loss painless, passed on to child, and prognosis is poor because there's no cure. Finally, ocular rosacea, a rare condition that develops in people with rosacea. An example of a person with rosacea 
is Donald Trump. Anyway, ocular rosacea can cause red burning and watery eyes. We treat this condition with lid scrubbing and topical antibiotics, such as erythromycin and lubricants. More severe cases may need systemic antibiotics and topical cyclosporin. All right, time for questions. A 70-year-old man describes straight lines as wavy. What is the diagnosis? Remember, that's macular degeneration. If you have a tough time remembering that, remember this, the wavy lines. Remember, they can't discern edges, and that's why they have a tough time discerning faces. An older man has gradual blurred vision with driving at night being especially difficult. What's the diagnosis? Remember the Cadillac at night. Cadillac at night for cataracts. A 76-year-old woman comes into the office for a well visit and fundoscopic exam shows an enlarged optic disc. Remember, the form of glaucoma found incidentally is open angle glaucoma. That's what's going on over here. A 29-year-old woman comes in with blurry vision in her right eye along with uncomfortable eye movement. So this is optic neuritis, remember, associated with MS. Retinal hemorrhage with tortuous veins and cotton wool spots. Remember Mars? Mars was central retinal vein occlusion. In which eye disease is blindness caused by one's own eyelashes? Remember, that's trachoma, the world's leading cause of infectious blindness. All right, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Remember to get the free slides from my website and take care.